All right, so it is 11.01 a.m. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to week three of Advanced Kentucky's AP Content Review Sessions online for AP Computer Science A. My name is Aaron Timmons. I am the Mathematics con Content Director. I'm joined by our STEM coordinator, Dr. Cherry McGuffin, and our presenter for today, Dr. Joe Hoffer from Indiana Wesleyan University. So we're very happy to have him here. He's going to be talking about array lists, which I know is one of the big uh, topics showing up on the free response question for this year's AP exam. So we should have a lot of good information to share. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple housekeeping things with you right now, and then I'll turn it over to him. So just a reminder, this session is intended for a Kentucky audience. Uh, we welcome people from around the uh, state, around the country, around the world. Uh, we'll do all we can to provide every student with an equitable opportunity to learn. During the session, we encourage participation. Please know, though, any participant causing disruption will be removed. Our hosts uh, and our contact information is on this screen. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Give us a follow on Twitter, Facebook, if you have any questions afterwards. Your microphones are going to be off for the entire meeting, as well as your video. Please leave your videos off or else you'll be removed. Uh, utilize the chat feature at the bottom right-hand corner of your Zoom um, controls. We will be answering questions. We'll be monitoring the chat. Uh, please feel free to teacher, student, anybody, uh, feel free to ask a question. We will get those taken care of. If, if you would rather chat directly to one of us, you can do that as well. Um, so please take advantage of that. This recording, as well as all previous recordings, as well as other resources for both teachers and students can be found at kyap2020.com. Um, we'll get this recording up by the end of the day today at the latest. All right, so before we get started with Joe, uh, I, I'm going to ask you to open up a different browser. Go to this Billy link, please, and, and sign in. It's a very quick four, four or five question Google form. I'm gonna pause the recording here just for a few minutes to give you the chance to get your handouts for today, as well as get everything situated, and then we will uh, pick right back up. All right, so um, hopefully you've had enough time to get yourself situated. Again, uh, please make sure you have the handouts in front of you. I'm going to turn things over to our presenter for today, Dr. Hoffert. He can give him, uh, give you all some background information on him and his computer science knowledge. So without further ado, Dr. Hoffert, take it away. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Man, that was great music. I felt like I was in South America or something like that. Was that bossa nova kind of thing? It was good old-fashioned elevator music. Oh, <laughs> it was good elevator music, I liked it. Um, yeah, so, so I'm Joe Hoffert. I teach computer science at Indiana Wesleyan University. Um, been in industry for, I don't know, 20, 25 years, and then then got my PhD in computer science and have taught at the college level uh, last nine years or so. Been involved with um, AP, Computer Science A, and Computer Science Principles the last, oh, I don't know, maybe five years. Did a couple years grading for the A exam and then switched to principles when it came online. So I've been involved with uh, principles most recently. So that's a real quick uh, background for me. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about um, array lists and uh, at least to start out pretty much just going through um, the handout. Feel free to ask questions. I've got a, a poll question in there. I've got two that I'll ask um, Aaron or, or Sherry to, to bring up uh, at the appropriate time. Um, but I'm Feel free to raise questions in the chat and all that kind of stuff and have that have this be as interactive um, as it can be. Because it's always hard to know where, where people are and um, prefer not to go over material if, if people already know that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're focusing on uh, array lists. And I guess just even to start out, um, Aaron, can you, Aaron or Sherry, can you bring up that first poll question? Okay, so this is just asking, um, there are differences between array list and um, an array in Java. And so this is just asking you, know, what, what are the differences? Right, and in particular, this is asking, you know, how does an array list differ from 
a Java array in particular. All right, so we had everybody respond, and uh, you should be able to see the results on your screen right there. Okay, right. Um, yes, so the, the big difference, um, given your choices here, is that elements can be added or removed with an array list. So looking at the other choices, you know, all elements must be of the same type. That's true for array list, but it's also true for arrays, right? It has to be the same, same type. Um, and it can contain both object references and primitive types. That's only true for arrays and not true for array list, right? You have to have object references. And then the data type is determined in the declaration. That's true for, for both of them as well. Okay, so um, I think most people understood when we have an array list that allows us to add and remove elements. Okay, that's good. Um, Let's see then. How about we go to the, the second poll then? Can you bring that up, Aaron? Okay. So um, in your handout, it also talks about an enhanced for loop and an indexed for loop. And that's important um, because when we have collections in general, array lists, arrays in particular, uh, we will want to be iterating through them. So this question essentially asks, you know, how is an enhanced for loop different from an indexed for loop? All right, the results should be up. Okay, all right. Um, let's see, so we'll go through the answers here. There was, um, most people picked, they allow easy access of elements. And that's what I was going for. Um, if we look at the sheet on, for example, page two, right? So it highlights, uh, the differences between enhanced for loops and indexed for loops. Um, there's less code for an enhanced for loop. Um, so that's why the third choice is not correct. Um, it's actually less error prone for an enhanced for loop, right? So the fourth one's not correct. Um, the first one's not correct because an enhanced for loop, you can get access to the element, but you can't change them with an enhanced for loop. Uh, as a side note, there are other languages that let you do that kind of thing, uh, but Java does not. If you're gonna do an enhanced for loop, then you can access the element, but you can't change it, okay? And so that's why the second answer uh, was the one I was going for, right? So they allow easy access of elements. Okay, good. Um, so that gives me, a good idea where to start. It seems like most of you um, are comfortable with the different concepts uh, between array list and array and um, enhanced for loop and indexed for loop. So that's good background. Again, um, the reason we're looking at these loops is because any kind of container um, we're gonna to wanna to iterate through those. And the free response questions, um, yeah, I wanna say, I think this is true, always involve iterating through um, an array list in particular in this kind of example, right? So we need to be comfortable knowing how to do that. And when um, an index for loop is needed, right? If we're gonna do some modification and, and when it's not, if we're just doing some query across a whole range of values and we're not modifying anything, then an enhanced for loop can be helpful. It's less error prone. Um, you know, it talks about impossible to go out of bounds, for example. Okay. So then moving on, I'm looking at this third page. Um, 
and there are some exercises here for array list. Joe. Yes. I just want to check. Um, did you want participants to be looking at this on their own screen? I, I didn't know if you wanted to share your screen if you had that pulled up or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I thought. Um, yeah, I I will do that, Aaron. I didn't okay. know if um if you were doing that, but let me. Yes, let me bring that up then. My apologies. No worries. Okay. Okay. Can people see the handout then? This looks great. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Um, let's see, just to maybe a little review, right? How to declare an array list. Um, fairly simple to do, but again, this just declares um, you know, a reference to it. We don't actually have an array list at this point, right? In Java or um, objects, we always have to do the new, to actually have uh, an object. So then this is how we would actually create an array list. And there are different methods. We'll look at some of these for the array list being able to add, for example. Right, so here's an example of an array list of shapes. Um, and I think the assumption is, right, we've got this um, shape class and circle, star and triangle inherit from them. So if we say, we have an array list of shapes, then we can um, also add subclasses as well, because those are kinds of shapes. All right, and then yeah, we talked about enhanced for loop and indexed for loop. And again, we use the index for loop if we need to make a change, right? If you wanna change the value of the elements. Um, and also, if for some reason you need the index, um, if you need to know where in an array list some element is, then you'd need to also do the indexed for loop. So we don't get that with the enhanced for loop. We just get um, access to each element as it iterates through the loop. We don't know, you know um, what the index is of that element. We could track keep track of that ourselves, I guess, if we really wanted that. But if, if we're gonna do that, then it makes sense to just go ahead and do the indexed for loop. So those are the two cases where you'd wanna use the indexed for loop. So this just shows an example of passing an array list um, as a parameter, fairly simple to do. And as always, if anybody has questions, please raise them and, and we can go take a look at that. All right, so here are, I think this is page three. Unfortunately, these aren't numbered, but I think this is the third page. So we're looking at uh, methods for array list. And so we have a size method. So that's different than array, right? There's a, a length um, data member for an array. Array list, we have the size. Um, when I was grading the A exam, uh, it's been a few years, but um, when I did it then, they didn't make such a big deal whether you were doing length or, or size. Uh, I don't know if they've clamped down on that. Maybe they have students get the, the reference sheet. So, you know, that should be available to them. But there is that difference between um, array and array list. And as we discussed in the poll question, so we can do some modifications with array list. So we can um, append 
some objects. We've got this add here. It'll append. And so it sticks it to the end of the list. We also have an add that takes an index as well. So we have two adds, one that takes one parameter that's going to stick it at the end, append it, and one that takes um, an index. And so it will insert that object into that particular index and move everything else to the right, if we want to think of it that way, or down, or or up. Maybe <laughs> maybe it's confusing which um, which phrase is used. But things aren't overwritten when you do the add. Um, things get moved around. And then we have the get uh, method based on an index. And as is true in Java, everything is zero based. So if you want the first element, it's uh, index zero. And then if we want to do a replace, right? So this add doesn't do a replace, right? It does, uh, I guess I want to use insert. Maybe that terminology is not helpful either, but again, it doesn't overwrite anything. It adds to it. So there's one more element to the array list. However, if we want to do uh, replace, then we can call this set. And uh, obviously, we would need to give it an index for set because we want to overwrite um, a particular element in the array list. And then um, there's also a remove that just takes the element out. Um, I think it's worth highlighting here the call to remove um, can mess up um, depending. So you're going to be iterating through some array list and doing something with the elements. And you might want to be removing some elements, but then continue iterating. And so um, what the, the problem can be is um, you need to take into account, for example, if you're using, um, and you would be, you'd be using uh, an indexed for loop because you need the index to remove it. Um, and so then that's going to shrink the array list and um, you don't want to, um, if, if you want to keep iterating through that array list, you don't want to jump over the next element. So you then you shouldn't increase, in, increment the index you're using um, while you iterate through. So if that's not clear, there's an, an exercise or multiple choice question. And I know there won't be multiple choice um, questions on the exam, but I think these will be good to go through to help our understanding. Um, and there's an example in one of the multiple choice questions that, that talks about that. So just be careful um, when you use remove because things, you know, the, the array list is going to shrink. And um, if you're still, if you're continuing to iterate over that array list, you need to take that into account. And there are um, at least two different ways to uh, approach that. And we can take a look at those in a bit. OK, just a few exercises, again, as um, sanity checks. So which array list method replaces the element at a given position? Um, and I. I don't have a, a poll question for this, but can we facilitate with a, a chat or something like that, Aaron? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so again, just a real quick sanity check, which array list method replaces the element at a given position? Just type your uh, response in the chat box and we'll just do a quick, uh, quick glance through them.
And then Joey, can you see all those responses coming up? Um, you click chat, you should be able to see them all. Looks like everybody is saying set. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Um, and then uh, for the second question, which array list method removes the element at a given position? looks like remove is the uh, overwhelming response yeah well that, and yeah and that's probably a, a duh question right which method removes the element again just a real quick um sanity check um okay i'm trying to think good way um can we do this in in chat so there's a little bit of code on this third one so write code to swap the elements in the middle two positions so that the contents of nums will be six, seven, eight, nine. So we have this array list here, six, eight, seven, nine, and we wanna swap these two um, elements. I'm trying to think, yeah, can we do this in a chat maybe? Yeah, you should be able to put a, a few lines of code there in the chat as long as they, put it all together in one, one chat statement. Okay, well, let, let's try that and see how that goes. So, um, you know, just write some code that would do that swap. And this is the no judgment zone, so. Yep, that's right. The whole point is to learn, review. So maybe we can just take a quick poll uh, to see if um, people are getting stuck or um, if this is not too hard. I don't, I don't see any responses yet. And so I'm not sure if people are um, trying to think about how to get their answers into chat or if it's not clear to them how to answer. So if it's not clear, um, feel free to um, communicate that as well in the chat. It's not clear how to, how to address this problem. All right, here come a couple of responses. Are you able to see those, Joe? Yeah, I see them. How much more time do you think we should give, Aaron? Uh, maybe another minute or so, do you think? Okay, great, right. that sounds good. Yep, I see one more. <laughs> uh, 
All right, looks like you might be good to go. Okay. <clears throat> well, thanks everybody for responding. Um, in general, looking at the responses, the, the idea is correct, right? Whenever we swap, we need to always have a temp that's gonna hold one of the values because we're gonna overwrite that value, right? So that general algorithm is correct. And from the responses, <clears throat> people are, are getting that idea. And so that's good. Now we need to look at the particulars. Um, let's see if I can bring this up here a little bit. Look. So it's important to pay attention to um, the interface, uh, what we're given for array list. Um, and so some people were treating array list like it's an array, okay? But we have a different interface. So let's see if I can get this up here. All right. So here, here is a, a, a way to do this, right? So again, everybody's getting the idea of, okay, we need to store off, get one of the values and, and store it off, okay. But now, um, as far as setting values, now we wanna do that set, right? So we don't wanna do an add because what an add does, it actually, um, puts uh, an additional element into that array list, okay? So that actually lengthens or increases the number um, of elements in the array list. And we don't wanna do that, we're just doing a swap. So it's important to use the set. Okay. And, uh, and as we look at the set, you know, it takes an index and it takes a value. So those two parameters. And so we use the two calls to set, okay? Um, so a little bit different than some of the responses. So take a look, take a look at this solution and um, let us know if you have questions, if something's not clear. So again, all the responses that I saw, they had the, the key algorithmic point that yes, you have to have you know, some temporary and store that off because you have to overwrite. Um, but it's important to use set and not add. Uh, and it's important when you call set, it has two parameters. All right, any questions about that uh, solution? Give a little bit of time there. No, I think we're good to move on now. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so let's look at some of these multiple choice questions. And again, I, I realize there aren't going to be multiple choice uh, questions, but I think these are good to help us um, confirm, enhance our understanding of um, array list. Let's One comment to Joe is that uh, the multiple choice helped to give a good model of what some of our answers should look like as free responses. Yes, right. That's a good point. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah. Uh, although I have to say, <laughs> I wish they would have um, indented. I guess I could have gone in and modified the PDF. But not great coding standards. 
Um, but uh, as far as you know, readability and that kind of thing. Um, but yes, good as far as how things um, should be set up or how they shouldn't be. Uh, again, we'll we'll take a look at at some of these here. So let's take a look at this. Um, this first, right, okay. One quick note, uh, Kevin had mentioned in chat that the double set strategy eliminates the need to add in new method and removes the original correct. So he had that um, comment or question there. So just wanted to clarify it through chat. Yes, uh, that's right. And, and so you, you could use, you could use add, but then you'd have to use remove as well. Um, so again, as in, a lot of um, circumstances, there are lots of different approaches uh, to solve a problem. And so I shouldn't say you should never use add. You can use add, but then you're gonna have to use remove. And it gets, I think it gets a little more complicated because you have to keep track of where you added and you know, you're gonna have to take away. And so if you just use set, then you don't have to worry about Oh, I, I put an extra element in there and I'm going to have to remove one, that kind of thing. But you, but you can do that. I just think it's a little more complicated to do that. Thanks, Jim. Okay, so let's look at um, this question here. So consider the following method, which is intended to remove all the odd values in a list. And so, I, I, yeah, I actually think this is a pretty good question. So which of the code segments shown below will build a list that makes remove odd appear to work as intended? Okay, so here's, here's some code. It's gonna go through this list and the idea is to um, remove any odd values. Um, but as you might intuit, there are probably some problems with this code up here. But the question then is asking, oh, okay, which of these code snippets would, would make this code up here, uh, up here appear to work correctly? So take some time and um, and work through the work through the examples figure out what it's doing um you know so you have your choices um essentially you know different combinations the only combination that's not there is uh like one like all three right but other than that you know you could have the first this one does it or just this you know the second one just this third one or you know First and second, second and third. I guess first and third is not there as well. So anyway, work through that and see what you come up with um, for an answer. I can shrink this so that helps to try and get everything on here. Although I'm hoping you all have the handouts and can look at that. 
that way. Um, maybe I should do a little bit of review as well. Um, is it clear what the percent operator is doing? It's not actually the percent operator, but this percent here. Um, if there are any questions about that, the mod operator, um, feel free to say something, type something in chat. Um, maybe we'll do this, uh, Aaron, Sherry, and let me know if you think it's a good idea. Maybe just give another uh, minute and then have participants select one of the choices. Does that sound good? There are a couple of answers in the chat box there. I don't know if you've seen those or not, but um, I, th I think we'll be good to go to go ahead and answer. And, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't seen those. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not getting updates. Uh, let's see. So there's a, a question confused in what we're being asked to do. Are the multiple choice options supposed to be code that mimics the remove add method? No. So these code snippets, what they do, they, they create some um, list, right? They have their array list and populated with values. And so if we you know, and so we have three different approaches to populating an array list with values. And so if we pass those into this remove odd, which, which one of these, maybe multiple of them, will create array lists with elements so that this appears to work correctly? So I apologize if, the, if that wasn't clear. But that's what that's what's going on, right? So option one, this is going to create an array list with certain values. Option two, array list with certain values. Option three, array list with certain values. If we take those array lists that are created and pass them to that to this remove odd function, which of these lists <clears throat> will give us the result? Um, will give us the correct result, even though there's, um, even though there's a problem essentially with remove odd. So that's the question, right? That will make remove odd appear to work as intended. As intended. So there's a problem with remove odd, but which of these lists generated won't show that problem is maybe another way to state, to, to state it. Does that help? Now, I apologize for not um, mentioning that before. Thanks, thanks for asking. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I guess I'm still not seeing any answers. Are you seeing those, Sherry, Aaron? Yeah, I got some and they went privately to me. I think that's just because I oh. had something in the chat. So. Oh, okay. So I think we're ready to go along with the answer. Okay, great. Um, so then the answer is D, one and two. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, maybe the easy one to go through is, you know, why, do, why does two create um, values in array list that makes this remove odd function appear to work? Well, it's only putting even values in, right? So it's starting out at zero and it's incrementing by two um, up to 10, right? Less than 12. So we're putting in there zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, right? Um, and even if we had a remove odd function that worked correctly, um, you know, it wouldn't take out any odds because there aren't any odds in there, okay? Um, so the first choice here is a little more interesting because now we do have um, some odd values. So this if statement will get triggered, okay? The, right, so we have, you know, zero through 11 that gets put into this array list. Um, and why does that appear to work? Well, because, um, you know, it'll check zero and say, well, that's not, um, that's not an odd value. That's essentially what this if statement is doing, right? Any number mod two, if we get a remainder of one, it just says that's an odd number. Okay. Um, so it looks at zero, that doesn't apply. It looks at one, oh, that applies. So let me remove, um, remove that element of one. And the problem with this code is we're removing that element, um, but we're still increasing the index. So we're essentially hopping over that next element. In this case, uh, it appears to work correctly because that next element is an even number, right? We're going zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so with those sets, that set of values, it makes this remove odd appear to work correctly. But if we have, the reason this third one doesn't work um, is because we have all odd values, right? We're starting at one, and then, we're gonna, and then we go to three, five, seven, nine, 11, okay? And so we're gonna remove um, you know, the value one at index zero, right? And that gets removed, so it gets taken out and everything gets moved. Um, you know, we have one, one less element. So now, after this remove call, um, the very first element is gonna be three at index zero. But we're gonna hop over that because we are increasing the index. Okay. Right, so there's a response there. Reason three doesn't work is because it's filled with odds. Yeah. So um, let me know if there are questions about that. So again, that's, you, you need to be um, careful, mindful when, you, you, when you're iterating through an array list and you're doing a remove. We've got about 10 minutes uh, remaining, Joe. Okay, all right. Um, let's see, there's a question. What's the difference between list add i and list add uh, new integer i? Um, this is maybe a little bit of a, a tangent, and I'm not sure it's, um, it'll need to be covered um, on the exam, but essentially, you know, I, I assume is, is just an int and that's a base type. Um, but array list needs to take, uh, you know, the object type, into, not the base type int. Um, and so um, if you call new integer, 
with I. I don't know if everybody can see, if everybody can see that um, code. Um, it, it converts an int type to an integer uh, object type. Um, but I think Java will typically do that anyway. It's called auto boxing. Um, so from okay. a server standpoint, if you ended up using an op an integer type instead of an object type, what would how would a, how would a reader differentiate that on a pre response? I'm sorry. Can you ask that again, please, Sherry? Sure. So if, if you used an integer type and and as a on your free response instead of an object integer type, then um, how would a reader differentiate that scoring wise? Um, I if that came up and and if the um, if the reader wasn't familiar with auto boxing, hopefully they would ask like their table leader or something like that, and then the table leader would say, "Oh yeah, that." That code should work fine. It'll, you know, the auto boxing. It'll do the conversion as needed from base type to um, object type, integer class type, kind of thing. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we don't have a lot of time. Um, let's move down then. Let's just take a look at um, this free response here. And this one in particular uh, talks about selling boxes of cookies, right? So we have this class cookie order. Uh, we've got the constructor. Um, we, you know, we can get the variety, um, get the number of boxes. Okay, so instance variables, and this is pretty common, right? There's stuff not shown. What that means is you don't need to worry about it. Okay. So the main thing is we've got a cookie order. Um, the constructor takes a variety and number of boxes, and we can get that information back. Okay. So let's just look at this. Um, this next page here it talks about a master order. Right, so here's where the array list is coming into play. This master order has an array list of this cookie order class up here. Okay, so imagine you know Girl Scout cookies, and um, you know somebody puts in an order and they have they you know open a bunch of different types of cookies that they want. So that's essentially what this is um, keeping track of. And so. Um, we have the constructor that creates an array list. And again, there's nothing in there, but it creates the object for us. Um, and we have this add order, which just adds the order to the, the orders data member. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, how would you implement this method get total boxes? Okay, so the idea is you've got this array list with these orders. Um, and you would return the value that just says, for this order, these are the number of boxes um, for this order. And so the idea is, again, really common. You're gonna be iterating through this array list, right? You need to do that. And with each of these cookie orders, you know what's in there? Well, we've got the variety, and more importantly, in this scenario, we've got the you know get num boxes. Okay, so um, take a few minutes and see if you can come up with some code um, that would get you the return the number of boxes for the master order. So we're looking at, looking at, sorry, looking at this here.
And Aaron, how much time do we have left? Are we going right up to 11 or you need to do a couple things before that? About five minutes. Okay. And then we'll do some, some wrap it up. Okay. Let me throw this in here too. So you're going to be iterating through the array list. You could use an indexed for, or you could use an enhanced for, um, but here you're just getting values. You're not changing anything, right? So think about um, what might be the better choice there, enhanced for or indexed for. And if you don't mind, Joe, we had questions about the enhanced for a couple weeks ago. Do you mind it's just a briefly explaining an, a difference between the enhanced for and the and the indexed for? Oh, not at all. Should, do you want me to do that now? Yeah, while they're working on it, it might be helpful. Okay, sure. So let's go back up. Talk about that here. So this is, I think, page two. So with the enhanced for loop, um, it makes it really easy uh, to get the elements and go through them, right? So here's the syntax, you um, name the type. Um, and here for an array list, right? If nums is an array list, right? Which should be in our case. It, the, here's an example of doing the, the auto boxing again, right? Because we can't have an array list of ints they would have to be integers, but it could do that kind of conversion. So um, essentially this would be the syntax here. And what this does, what Java does for you, it says, oh, I know this is a collection and I know it has a, so many elements and I will set it up to hand you these elements one by one kind of thing, right? So if you run this code, it'll, you know, on one line, it'll print the first element and then the next element um, through all the elements, right? So it's pretty simple. This, this is the same functionality over here, right? But we have to set the, the initial index value. We have to set the continuation um, expression, Boolean expression. Um, we have to give it the command what to do um, for the next iteration, right? Incrementing. So functionally, these two are the same. Um, but what's nice for the enhanced for loop, there's no way to go out of bounds, right? We're not setting up the index. We're not initializing it. Uh, over here, we are. Um, you might say, well, why don't we always use enhanced for loop? Well, the problem is if you ever want to modify um, the elements, you can't do that with the enhanced for loop, right? You need to use this index, indexed for loop. Or if you need the index for some reason, right? Um, the enhanced for loop will never give you the index, right? It's hiding that from you, right? Using abstraction, so it's hiding away that detail, um, assuming you don't need it. If you do need it, then you need to use the index for loop. And we've got some responses, so it uh, looks like we can go ahead and look at the uh, answer. Okay. Let's switch that over here then. All right. Um, yeah, so essentially, the idea is you're iterating through this up here. Um, 
right you're just iterating through the cookie orders and so here um, you know in this example answer and again you could use an index for loop if you want to but here we don't need the index and we're not changing anything so this is a good place to use the um, you know the enhanced for loop because right? we're just getting information and so you know we've got this array list this orders data member which is an array list and it's going to grab you know one by one each of the cookie orders that are in there and then we just you know, we have this sum we initialize to zero and um, we just add the number of boxes we get from each order and then we return the sum okay. so i think that's what that's what some of you had right and some of you use the index for loop and that's fine um, and some of you use the enhanced for loop either will work um, the enhanced for loop is nice but it gets rid of some of the errors and all that um, and so I think I think we're out of time. The second part, um, maybe you can take a look at, but now you're removing particular varieties, um, and you know you're going to use the the remove command, and so you have to be careful because you're modifying the array list as you as you're still iterating through it. So again, there's that that caution, and um, I think I'm out of time. Isn't that right, Aaron? We are we are out of time. Okay. One quick question. Um, I got a message about the key to the handout. So that they, um, what do they need to do, Joe, if the teachers would like to have the key to the handout? Let's see, Aaron. I I think I sent that to you. Did I not? You did. So okay. teachers, teachers, if you want solutions to the questions Joe is working on, um, please feel free to shoot me an email, and I can get those to you. And if you have any follow-up questions for Joe, you can reach out to him as well or Sherry. Yes. Um, Please do that. Be great. So I'm going to share my screen here for one last second. So again, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Joe, you did a really good job. I very much appreciate you taking your time to uh, share with us your expertise. Um, emails for all of us can be found at the, on the screen here, along with our website's additional information. Um, the handout link, as well as this recording, will be put on kyap2020.com by the end of the day. So. Um, direct people to it that want to see it again or if you want to rewatch certain parts of it feel free to do so uh, next week we are going to be joined by dr hofford again he'll be going over free response strategies a mixed review for the apcsa exam coming up um, so we're looking forward to having you again with us joe and then because of the the demand and because of the the calendar dates for the ap exam itself we have added one additional csa review session that will be on may 6th and that's going to be with Rob Schultz. So if that name sounds familiar, he, he is the one doing the College Board videos along with Jill Westerlin. So uh, we'll be joined by Rob. Also, we have added mock exam questions for you uh, and your students if they want to partake in those. So you can go to the KYAP 2020 website as well to get information on how that works. So um, Sherry, Joe, if there's no other uh, closing remarks from you, we will sign off. That sounds great. Thanks for your attention, everybody. All right, thank you all so much. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week.